This is how our lights go out. Drained of our precious fluids. What do you mean by that? Though I must confess, I have always admired your lustrous finish. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! <laughs> shit! No! That is not happening right now! Hey guys, it's the Pink King here. Transformers. I love them. You love them. Everyone loves them. And why wouldn't they? They're some of the most creative and awesome characters in all of fiction. And seeing as Transformers 1 is coming out where I am very soon, I wanted to talk about one of my personal favourite TV shows of all time, Transformers Prime. But seeing as it's spooky month, there's one episode in particular I want to focus on today, that being Season 3's Episode 8, The Zombie Episode. Make him a tad more manageable. <laughs> yes, you heard me right, zombies, as in transformer zombies. With a concept that cool, how could you not be interested? Not only is this concept of zombie transformers a new one created by the series, but it was this episode that has remained with me the most out of almost every episode of the entire series. So I want to talk about why this episode works so well, and how it managed to become iconic to Transformer fans. But before we do that, consider subscribing. It's been a dream of mine to get to 5,000 subscribers, and we're only a few subscribers away from doing just that. So if you enjoy the video and want more content just like this, then be sure to subscribe right now. Not only will you be helping me achieve my dreams, but you'll be helping me make more content for you guys just like this. And with that, let's get back to the video! First, what makes this episode so special? Well, first off, it has no Autobots. It's entirely centered around the Decepticons and how their desperation leads to the creation of an absolute abomination of nature. Not only is this a new perspective, but it's surprisingly very entertaining as seeing how these personalities handle the situation, it's something that just works. And you know what else just works? The comedy. This episode is surprisingly hilarious and terrifying. The jokes in this episode are not just one method of humour, but a variety of methods from verbal, conversation, to physical and animated. And speaking of animation, that here is also top notch, as here the colours have been muted to highlight a more gothic and scary atmosphere, in comparison to prior episodes where the colours are much more brighter. They didn't have to do that, but it goes to show how dedicated the creators were to making this show as high of quality as possible. And quality here is no joke, because not only do we get great animation, but also a fun dynamic between Starscream and Knockout. Honestly, I love this show's version of Starscream. It's the best version of Starscream ever. The voice actor is just flawless here. <laughs> and of course, how could you not like Knockout? And it's these two that lead to some of the greatest scenes in TV history, like this one. But we are also here for fun stuff like Arachnid having a rematch against Soundwave. That was a very surprising and yet fun addition. More Insecticon action. And of course, you know, the whole way they end that storyline. And of course, the juicy amount of horror. Horror and Transformers have never really been blended on a scale as big as this before. So the creators doing it here was not only risky, but untested before really and ultimately when looking at how this show did it did it pretty well all you need to do is look at the zombie con himself breakdown well technically silas you see in a prior episode breakdown was dismantled and reassembled by mech and silas the human villain to both autobots and decepticon was revived inside of breakdown's body so now they're one being it's, it's a lot it's a lot, okay, I know it's a lot. Already, that idea of Silas becoming Breakdown is pretty horrific to think about, you know, seeing as the whole Frankenstein link is already there. But then they infuse this sin against Primus with dark energon and synthetic energon, not only making him stronger, but undead, 
with his horrifying design com complementing the mood perfectly. Like, just look at what Breakdown used to look like before this episode, and what he looked like during this episode. It's so striking how different and tragic Breakdown's story has been over this entire series. And this design just perfectly complements that sad yet horrifying nature. And in a way, despite him being one of the most evil characters in Transformers history, you do ultimately feel a bit sorry for Silas, as despite what he's done, nobody deserves what he was put through in this episode. It was honestly kind of disturbing, and I'm surprised it made it to air this episode. And if a series can make you feel genuinely bad for a character as bad as Silas, then it's definitely doing something right. However, if I were to criticise this episode, I would have to say it wrapped up a little too neatly. This is supposed to be a new deadly virus, but it's taken care of off-screen by Shockwave. And even as a kid watching this episode, I couldn't help but feel like things were moving a little too fast towards the end and that it was just wrapping up a bit too neatly. But I have to admit, as an adult now, I can understand why they made this decision. It's a tough decision because with all the stuff that they put in this episode, they are inevitably going to have to cut corners around certain areas. It sucks, but you know, it makes sense, and I think ultimately this is probably the best result they could come up with with how much stuff they have to get in so it didn't feel too rushed in the end. In conclusion, Transformers Prime as a series really pushed what was possible in the Transformers mythos, and this episode proves that not only can you think outside the box more with what's possible, but you can make it interesting and good. It, you know, it's stuff like this that I've always wanted to see in other franchises, in specifically Star Wars. As just like in Star Wars, Transformers Prime is all about a war between different groups in space. But unlike Star Wars, Transformers here isn't afraid to look in between the fighting and see the, the other stories that happen around the war, and that might affect the war in different ways. Not only does this help to expand the world, but it provides something genuinely new and interesting. Because all the time, it's not all so centred around just one war that it has to constantly follow through that line. It's not afraid to make its own stories that can fit into the world and expand the lore. But what do you guys think? Did you guys enjoy this episode also? Or is there perhaps something I've missed? Let me know in the comments. I read all of your guys' comments, so I'd be very interested to talk about this with you guys. It's been the Pink King here. And with that, I will see you all next time.